So anybody who's been watching this with us for a while understands that the uh, solar wind is coming from the back of the planet. Quite a good little gust blowing the bow shock out. Obviously, these polarity arrows don't lie. We've got huge compression on the back and the front, obviously, by huge magnets that are not CERN. We have watched this progressively get stronger and stronger of a crunch over a three-year period. This is not something that just happened last week. This has been going on four years now. Three, specifically, since we started seeing a little bit of something, something back here. And it's grown into what it has been displaying of late. It is not guesswork. That's for sure. And you can go out at night and look in your north horizon because that is where all these things are. You can see them clearly on the north horizon. Do I have a picture of them? No. Do I take pictures of the moon or do I send you out to look at the moon? Well, I'm going to send you out to look at your night sky in the north horizon. And I challenge you to fucking prove me wrong. There is a planet as big as we are within lunar distance. And you can see it with your eyeballs. Now, if you want to listen to somebody telling you I'm crazy and choose not to look, just simply don't look and talk shit, well... Have fun with that, okay? It's there, and your opinion will never change the fact that if you look in your north horizon, you're going to see a big-ass fucking planet every night. Yes. Now, you may ask yourself, why is the UV so high? Why is the globe on fire? Well, you can answer that yourself when you start looking. At your sky when it rains and you see two fucking rainbows of different spectrums color spectrum you can't have two different color spectrums out of one light source obviously there's the proof on the clouds you have two suns shining on this side of the fucking planet every day the scottish moors are on fire they've evacuated south and central spain portugal is burning italy is burning the swiss alps are burning four times the size of texas in the fucking tundra of siberia are on fire who don't forget africa africa is burning the fuck up the Amazon is burning the fuck up. The Yucatan has already burned, and all the people are up against the border talking about my home is gone. And you have idiots like Lee saying that I am reporting hot spots. Folks, you're on fire. And if you don't open your eyes, you're going to get a shock of your life. Avalanche of fires, fires everywhere. The trees are hollow. The fucking trees are hollow because of microwave energy. Everybody keeps talking about how the chemtrails are filling up the roots of the trees and making them die. Let me tell you something. The trees have full foliage. If the fucking roots were fucking clogged, they wouldn't be getting water up the tree to fucking make leaves. The reason your trees are hollow and on fire is because we have microwave energy from three suns burning them and your home. Your home is going to burn and your roof is going to catch on fire first. I'm telling you how it's going to happen. And it's already happening. Why are the roofs catching on fire around the world? Because they do not replenish water like a tree does, and your house has no bark. That's why. A couple years ago, I started noticing the corn was dying about two foot tall, not producing any ears from here to China. Hundreds and thousands of fucking miles of dead 
fucking corn for two years in a row. This being the third year now, we're starting to see some major shortages on the shelf. Now, I told you a long time ago, well, we have to go into some sort of lockdown on this day because two weeks later, Wendy stopped selling beef and the people of the world, at least the United States, had to be fooled into thinking it was something other than the fact of the grain shortage. So they put in place an excuse, said it was the butcher getting sick. It wasn't. Then all of a sudden it was the hacking Russian guy that made the grain shortage, and now it's the war. All of a sudden, it's getting so bad that they're having to mess with the entire supply chain because the food can't be the only thing in shortage, or people would fucking wake up to the fact the grain's been dying and we're out of food. It's nothing about what they're telling you, and I, we've been documenting it all along. It isn't I said two years ago, we're going to have a fucking little bit of food shortage and it's going to fix itself. Like some people would have, would be saying that I did. I, I don't know. I was right then and I'm even righter now. I said it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Guess what? It's worse. I was not wrong. People ask, is it normal to have two shadows? Most shadows made by a single light source actually do have two parts. The You can also get two separate shadows by one light source. But if you have two objects to create them... <laughs> but no, if you only have one light source and one object, you can't get more than one separate shadow. When you're driving down the road during the day going north or south, your vehicles in front of you will have two shadows, one on each side of the vehicle. I am never going to point at something that you cannot see yourself. Like the moon doing a cartwheel from rise to set, and that big ass fucking planet behind us in the northern horizon every night. Now we watched that shit creep up on us on Iswa, and we had the discussion, well, you know what, if they're that close, we should be able to see them. And was, uh, about a year ago, walked out and looked, and there they were, and they keep getting bigger. That motherfucker's within lunar distance, and it's our size. If you don't want to go out at night and look, don't. If you want to see what's real, you'll go out and look in the north horizon and see a massive fucking planet right here in your sky every night. You'll never question who's right or wrong at that point. I'm a fucking 53-year-old man. I have nothing to gain to telling you there's something there and it wouldn't be. I fully expect you to go out and check my work. Go out there and tell me where I'm wrong. Ready? Go. Now on this channel we have gone over giraffes. Nobody can prove me wrong there. Can you? We've gone over fucking lunar phases. We have gone over magnets stacking. We've gone over ultraviolet fucking versus visual light. We have gone over 1748 hertz, omnipresence, the conical hat and small cover that is all over the globe in every fucking stone that wouldn't roll fast enough, definitely not in worship, but warning. Yeah, I've shown working models for this fucking plane. I don't care who fucking poo-poos it. You watched me literally give the man a link to the Lost Book of Inky, and the motherfucker refused to listen to it so he could say the line doesn't exist. Guess what? This thing can fly. Say that. Polly just reminded me that actually ancient aliens uh, had a flying model on TV. So, yeah, whoever's telling you that doesn't fly is a fucktard.
Oh my God. They must be the drunk on the job site where, you know, you got to fight with them all day to hold the fucking tape right so you can get a real measurement. It's, it's fucking nuts dealing with people like that. This has been long translated and it's 100% translation proper and correct. Has been checked by experts, linguist experts, and minds blown. I rest my case. Check my work, but you'd better bring real physics instead of fucking stupid, uneducated shit that you pulled out of your ass. Like, Jesus Christ.